on guys it's 1022 John here and we're back with another CSGO video I am recording this like probably about 30 seconds after the last video like the game from the last video started up and this gun actually I held one of these in real life I was thinking about buying it it was, wasn't this particular model but it was a similar model this model, I believe, is actually banned in the United States. But there's a company that makes a similar model that is legal in the United States. It's er, it's not illegal to own one, but it is illegal to uh, sell it to someone in the United States. So if you had it before the law was made, then you legally own it. But... It's just illegal to sell them to the United States, and it's an out-of-state country that's, or it's an outside of the United States where these guns are made. But they make a 308 version of it in America, or basically a 7.62. I think it fires 308 to 7.62, but they're it's like made of like three different guns that they just crammed together into one thing like they took parts out of all different guns to make it and it's to be honest it's not a very good gun it's a fragile gun it breaks really easily and some like the it's likely to have a slam fire because of the way the primer works or not the way the primer but the way the firing pin works and if you don't know what slam fire is, it's a malfunction in the gun where it can, the sh firing pin can strike the primer of the bullet without the trigger being pulled. Like, it usually happens when you cock the gun. Anyways, and they can also, the MOA of this thing, which stands for margin of accuracy, it's like a three inch grouping. To put that into perspective, the deer rifle that I hunt with, that 243 Mossberg Patreon, uh, if you haven't seen one, that, it's one of my real weaponry videos. I'll try to remember. I'll leave a link down below. But uh, my 243 Mossberg Patreon uh, uh, has a quarter inch MOA, which means it hits a quarter inch of uh, it's a quarter inch of a single point about the size of a ballpoint pen believe that's right which means basically on most targets I'm hitting inside the bullseye that doesn't account for now an MOA is usually taken indoors it has to MOA is distance at a hundred yards I believe so they usually take it indoors though so that the wind is not a factor in it because if you take it outside there will be like the slightest breeze can blow your bullet off I've been hunting on days, and I fired on a very windy day one time, and I saw the dirt fly up behind the deer. And it's it's not fun to have a hunt on a windy day, especially because wind makes things colder than the actual temperature does, in my opinion. Like, I've been hunting in 38 degree weather that feels colder than 28 degrees because the wind is blowing and anything that's exposed to the surface will <laughs> be freezing cold I have to get a new pair of gloves for Christmas because it's, my old ones are too small and I've been hunting a few times this year without gloves on let me tell you it's not fun at all like in the slightest I would not recommend anybody to go hunting unless you're in, like in turkey season where it's usually warm and but like I would not recommend anybody to go hunting at this time of year where I live without warm clothes on because like it's it can it there's been times where we, me and my dad have to go home because it's so cold I tried to go hunting in the snow one time and I just couldn't do it. Could you please go away? This is more of the kind of scope that I'm used to anyways when I'm firing a gun. This is the type of scope that I usually have on. Maybe not this. 
I don't even know. There's not even a brand label on this. I don't even know what scope this is. We usually use uh, Bushnell Long Eye Relief. This is a fairly popular scope. Could you? There you go. But I use a Bushnell Long Eye Relief. I have three guns with it. Yeah, I think that's three now because I bought a new one. That you guys haven't actually seen in a real weaponry video. So look forward to that real soon. And I'm going to make a real weaponry video with it soon if I can. I, I, I want to go hunting with it, but I'm going to have to... My dad says it'd be fine to go hunting with it without target practice on first, but it's got a different trigger that I'm used to, and, and I really like that trigger on my own one, so it's going to have a lot to live up to. Because my Mossberg Patron, the gun that I currently deer, rock, or deer hunt with, it's got like a two-stage trigger where like it's got a safety trigger, and then it's got a... a um full pull trigger and once you pull through the safety trigger it's just like a hair trigger so it allows me to feel my trigger without the gun going off whereas this new one my dad says it has a really crisp trigger pull like you can't even feel the trick like you feel the trigger and then once you pull it it's gone but you can't really feel the trigger like there's no tension to pull back on before the bullet goes off it's like the second you squeeze it the trigger goes off so I don't really like that, but if it lives up to it, it and it's going to have a lot more knockdown power because my Mossberg Patron is a 243 caliber and this is a 308. 243 is a lower, less recoil caliber, but a 308 is that's what a lot of old school snipers use. Actually, it's still what a lot of newer snipers use, like. Is considered uh to put this in perspective, most SWAT snipers use it because most SWAT snipers aren't. I can't. I can't remember the exact range that uh, 308 is still considered accurate, hit, but like most old school snipers had a range of approximately 800 yards. I think my 243 has a maximum range of 400. Maximum accurate range. And that's not like accounting for bullet drop or anything. It's just, or it's accounting for bullet drop. Like, it can stay in that. You can calculate bullet drop within that range. I want to, I'd really like to go to, uh, the shooting range that we go to, the maximum range is 100 yards. That's the longest sh shot you can take. I would really like to, even though where I hunt, we're not going to get like a 400 yard shot. The longest distance that we can shoot is 200 yards with my uh, hunting spot because we're shooting across the field. And that's the maximum shot that I've ever taken with it. And I'm pretty proud of my gun for actually hitting that shot. But, but oh, hey, hey. But, I'd like to be able to... Alrighty guys, I'm back, and I accidentally clicked Windows, which exited me out of the game, which stopped my recording. And so, if you if you guys didn't hear what I was talking about, I was talking about shooting, and like, at the distance, and there's a, it's a, a couple of, it's a good little ways away from where I live, but Skyline, I think is where it's at, that there's a shooting range that had, of course it, me and my dad typically don't go to ranges that have like a range master because they just basically slow us down when we're trying to do something. Like if we're trying to uh, go get the target to see how well we were shooting, then the, we'd have to clear it with a range master and get the range master to shut down the range so we could go up there. Whereas like where we shoot... All we have to do is ask the guy next to us, Hey, man, you mind not shooting for a second? Yeah, sure, man, we can go out there and collect our targets. But, anyways, they have some, like, 400-yard shooting ranges, which I would love to shoot at a 400-yard range. Not necessarily because I need to be accurate at 400 yards, because I don't. Like, maximum shot I'd ever take is, like, 200 yards. It's, but... Uh, I'd like to be able to challenge myself to see if I had what it takes to 
take a shot at that range, you know. Cause not everybody can hit at that range. Snipers have to go through years, or not years, I exaggerate that a bit much. It's several, I think when sniper schools first started, like when they first started coming up with the concept of sniper, training took 10 weeks. Now it takes 10 months, I believe. I believe that's the thing. So, and that and that teaches you, in that time they teach you bullet drop, bullet spin, or bullet drift, bullet drop, Corleolis effect, which only affects you if you're shooting like over massive distances. They teach you the Coriolis effect, bullet spin, bullet, or, it's, it's not bullet spin, it's bullet drift. Um... And then they have teach you how to deal with wind compensation. Uh, they teach you how to do uh, range markers, like basically allows you to pick out a target. It allows you to do triangulation, where you can say you can put in the distance between an average person's eyes and the distance for how far you away or how far you are away. And it'll tell you how high you need to aim your gun. And and it'll, it like, I can't remember the exact formula, but it's something like, uh, distance between the eyes over her, the distance you are away. He is the, um, distance, or how many inches you need to aim up. Or maybe I got that in reverse. I don't know. I'm not completely sure about that one. But there is a formula for it. Most things have a formula. One of the few things in sniping that doesn't have a formula is just like, um, shooting through glass. Like, that's the one thing that doesn't have a formula. Oh, yeah, the downward shooting formulas, too. Because if you are shooting downwards, a lot of people don't understand this. Most people think if you're shooting downwards, your bullet gets drug even farther downwards. But if you're shooting downwards, the bullet will actually go up. It doesn't make sense, but the farther down you shoot, the higher the angle of the rise is on a bullet. It, it doesn't make sense to me, and I, I learned it when I was shooting my pellet guns. We were shooting out of a tree stand, and then we were shooting at birds on the uh, ground eating our deer, our food from our deer, deer feeder, and they was... I was shooting and I couldn't figure out why I was missing because I could hit them when they was in the tree right in front of me, but I couldn't hit them then. then my dad told me to aim below the bird because at the distance that I was shooting, it had enough effect on my uh, bullet to... Oh, that was two of them. had enough effect on my bullet to actually rise my... Uh, to raise the where, where my the, uh, sight should be. That makes sense what I just said, but, uh, like, it hit higher than what my crosshair was centered on. That makes more sense. But, oh, this gun. I, I can do some work with this. I think I have another skin for this gun. I think this one was just the prettier one. Ow. Got him. I want one of these guns in real life. Of course, I don't think this is actually... Ow. I don't think this is actually a gun that's legal for a standard person to own. Unless, like I was talking about in the last video, you get a permit for a fully auto weapon. Which, to be honest, you just have to tell them, hey, you want a fully auto permit, and tell them a reason why. And they'll give it to you if you have a good enough reason why you'd want one. Now, if you tell them you're going to go kill somebody with it, they're not going to give you a permit. But, like, if you tell them... They, I don't know exactly a reason why you could tell them that you wanted a fully auto. Some countries, it's legal to own a fully auto, but not in America. But you have to have special permits to own a fully auto in America. And I don't believe this weapon has a semi-auto variant. It is legal to own a MP5, however. UMP5, I believe, is legal, to, is legal too, because I believe there is also a semi-auto ver 
variant of the UMP5. Basically, it's an MP5 on a different uh, stock. Basically, that's all UMP. Oh, that's a teammate. That's all UMP5 is. Got him. Let's see. Ow, 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 stupid. Where, where is he? Ow, I got, oh, I think that guy got collateral on me. Oh, no. I really should have brought some water in here before I started playing. I had some hot chocolate, though. But my hot chocolate's cold now. Hot chocolate ain't any good or cold. I have Arctic hot chocolate. Hey, if you've ever had it, it's like, if you guys know what white chocolate is, it's like white chocolate, hot chocolate. And it's really good. I'm not actually that big of a fan of just like standard cocoa chocolate. Technically white chocolate is not chocolate because there's no cocoa in it. But it's still good in my opinion. <laughs> and I... 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 I, for the most part, I don't like normal chocolate, like cocoa chocolate, because I, I couldn't eat like a Hershey's candy bar of cocoa chocolate because I just don't like it. But, but I can eat like a Reese's peanut butter cup or a, mm, darn, or a Twix I can eat with a, a um, <coughs> I could eat a Twix because... I don't know why I can eat a Twix and not in a Reese's cup, but not anything else. But there are some candies I can eat chocolate on, but for the most part, I'd prefer white chocolate if you just ha gave me the option. Well, I'm gonna take this guy out. Oh, where'd he go? Get over here. Hey, hey, got him. Okay. Where's that guy shooting at me? Ow! I was reloading, man. Not cool. I want, uh, that's another thing that I want to add onto my list of guns that I own. I want to add on a bull pump gun because bull pump guns are actually incredibly accurate. Like, if you take a bull pump, a standard bull pump, and put it up against a standard AR, a bull pump will outperform it just about every time. And because, because bull pumps, a lot of people don't realize it, but bull pump that's half the size of an AR can have the same length of a barrel because the, the barrel actually starts like after the receiver and the receiver is in the stock now I have heard that they are harder to clean in some cases but it's just basically a different way of cleaning it. it's not really hard or you just have to keep track of more parts and really, it's not that much harder than AR. If you ever took apart an AR and looked inside it, you'd probably be thinking to yourself, Holy crap, what do I do? Uh, I've tried completely disassembling an AR, and my dad had to put it back together. <laughs> uh, most of the guns that I have actually aren't that complex. I have a... Gun that I own in this complex is a high point nine millimeter carbine. That's the most complex one I have. The rest of them, you could basically take them apart, and it'd be completely fine. But anyways, guys, I think I'm gonna have to end this video here. If you guys have enjoyed, please don't forget to leave a like. If you really enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe. But this is 1022 John signing off. I'll catch y'all in the next video.